This week on RSPMB Update, Dragon Weapon Special Attacks move into the current decade with the ability to destroy entire rooms. We also touch on what's coming in December, make good offerings, and other combat changes. This is RSPMB Update, episode 911, recorded Thursday, December 1st, 2022, Decembers and Dragons. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of our B&B Update. This week, Tannis is back after a, after a fun Thanksgiving that you had. Thank you, Shane. Yeah, it was, uh, it, it was quite fun. You know, we like to celebrate our, our holidays down here. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's one thing I always admire, that, that you Americans make Thanksgiving this one-day thing into, into what, what, for many people, is, is really a three- or four-day affair, including Black Friday uh, and all that, so... Um, leftovers yeah leftovers we do the leftovers here too we do the leftovers here too of course um but uh tannis is here in addition to tannis uh Thaxi, uh is also uh-huh. here um Assyrian said your segment this week should have been called tallying uh with Thaxi, perhaps <sighs> tallying with Thaxi? yep how very European of him <laughs> any particular reason other than counting counting with Thaxi? no Okay, no. cool, 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 cool. I appreciate that. No, no. That's. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna try to do light math this week. We're gonna try to avoid crunching numbers live on air. Actually, just give people the results, but we'll do a little bit of it. Yeah, and what we're talking about, of course, is the uh, combat uh, QOL mini strike, amongst other things. Uh, it's so and pretty. The the December Christmas Advent calendar is back as well. Uh, log in every day. Uh, throughout uh, December leading up to Christmas and get a item off of uh, the Treasure Hunter table. And if you log in for 15 days, you get a rather neat uh, portable snowfall uh, walking animation. Yeah. Or cosmetic aura. Is that, is, is that like what people are... What is the thing that people are using right now where they're like, it looks like they're on a surfboard or something, but it's snow. It's really weird. That would, would probably be one of the thing. one of the snowboards from past winter events, I think. Yeah, I couldn't be because yeah. I'm seeing be. it in fresh start. I wonder if they auto unlocked it somehow. Huh, I wonder if one of them is available with a premier token or something. Oh, that could be it. Oh, could be. maybe. Um, okay, I don't, I don't think so, but but maybe. Nonetheless, nonetheless, we're gonna get through all that, and of course, talk about uh, what's coming in the rest of December, amongst other things, and. With that, also uh, go back and see what Jagex is doing to make last week's game outage uh, good, as they promised they would do. But if you want to follow along, full show notes can be found at update.show. You can also join us in our Discord at rsbnb.com slash Discord and in Friends Chat Bits Bites. You can find me in game at uh, Shane12088 or Shane with three E's, Tannis at FSW Tannis. 79 and taxi is just taxi or taxi cab on fresh start there we go. but okay just let's dive straight into this the combat uh qol mini strike we're going to start off with the patch notes and move through some of the things uh that were talked about this week we're not going to start with the dragon weapons we're going to knock off a few other uh little uh patch notes along the way so uh, starting off god books can now be charged for up to 24 hours Rather than the previous uh, three, I think that uh, you could bank on them, so that's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the tool tips have been updated to better emphasize their effects. Good, and you know, as 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 we know, tool tips and having non good uh, descriptions in game is a symptom mm-hmm. of of the uh, twenty plus year old MMO that we have. So wonderful. I mean, it lets mm-hmm. you load up like thirty two pages at a time, which means that you don't necessarily need to keep pages in your bank now, too. Which yeah. Is- really yeah. nice yeah or you know uh realize you run out of pages and then run to the ge quickly and and load them up in your right bank then that that's that, well, that's that might still be happening but yeah that's something that always caught me was that you know you, you think you're gonna go for three hours and you might have a couple other mm-hmm. pages there you you run out along the way um they also uh fixed a bug where uh people who had the scripture of bic were able to net clues from it using some um bic book flashing i guess you could say 
yeah. and then you wouldn't be able then you get the clues and you wouldn't use charge with that, so that's been fixed. Um and here's a good one. Uh I think we were talking about this earlier in the week at some point. Desert ice and jungle mm-hmm. strike worms no longer require slayer tasks to to kill. Yeah, pre show for the bit we were, we were mentioning this. It was I mean it's super great for Iron Man, right? Or for anybody on fresh start, because otherwise if you have to have a task to kill jungle or uh, Desert Strike Worms, it's really hard to get those Hex Crest and uh, right. Focus Sight upgrades, okay. which are the equivalent of the Black Mask for Magic and Range. <gasps> um, so if you wanted to do Slayer, okay. um, you still have to have the Slayer level to kill them, but Iron Men who get that level don't have to spam through tasks to try to get their upgrades. They can actually just go and kill the darn things, which I think is awesome. Yeah, that's Interesting that's to note that the Wilderness Strike Worms were not included in this, the Lava Strike Worms. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I, so I think... Searing I, Ash are still rare. I think they want to kind of gatekeep those Searing Ashes on that. Fair enough. So Expensive would, prayer training, woo! Yeah, that it has would, to exist, and I'm okay with that. That would be that would be my, uh, my idea behind that as well. Um mm-hmm. Elves and Nihils uh, will now consistently spawn as the captured variant when newly placed in the player-owned Slayer dungeon, and NPCs mm-hmm. placed before now will continue to spawn a random variant. Yeah. Huh. I mean, nice for elves if you want to capture yeah. a bunch of magic using elves, or you know, melee using elves for your magic training or whatever. And Nihils, obviously, because some Nihil parts are way more valuable than others, so that's actually a fantastic... I'm permitted to go and capture a couple of Neil souls, Nile souls, do, 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 do either of you guys have any of these in your dungeon? Not currently, so no. I'm not currently affected by the patch. The elves would be a weird one for me. I don't know that I would, I mean, because the elves are already kind of split out, unless you wanted specific magic or range ones yeah. out of the Kidarn section. But Tannis, you're the Slayer person. What do you put in your dungeon? Um, It, it depends. Um, <laughs> But I will use Gemstone Dragons, Chaos, uh, Chaos Giants, or hmm. or like the the big ones, the four armed. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right use use those. Um, now I'll also switch out. Depends if when I was on my my grind, I would I would do something that I had a daily um mm. helm like a daily helm for. So either Dark Beast or Abbey. Right. Um, back then it would be Abbey Demons, but I guess maybe a bigger Abbey one now. now. Yeah, bigger one now. Um. So yeah. Okay, okay. And then here's a big one. Uh, Super Guthix Rest Restores um, no longer give adrenaline. Yeah, and I think that's an interesting because when I first read it, my brain immediately snapped to, this is a nerf, why is this a yeah. patch note? I don't Bingo. love this. And then thinking about it, so the fact, what they used to do, they used to give 15% adrenaline and they put your adrenaline pot cooldown active. So the problem with this is that if you want to use an adrenaline potion, instead of getting, you know, 40% adrenaline from using a renewal or similar, you get 15% from spamming your Guthix Rest. Now, the Guthix Rest, their other effect, the super ones especially, is that they heal you for 650 health. Um, And that's the part that actually is remaining right now. And the important, like, the reason that's important is that they are one of the five or six sources of liquid food, right? It's brews... Uh, Cerebrews, Guthix Rests, the two types of jellyfish, and Chiron Bonds, which obviously nobody's using because yeah. they're one bite and they don't heal very much, uh, on RuneScape 3. Um, you'll note the bug for that has allowed you to combat eat them that effectively treats all of those as liquids um, is also exists in Old School, and for Old School, those Chiron Bonds do heal a lot more, so you'll see them in people's inventories there. Um, but the specific thing to note about this is that... Um, Guthix Express felt bad to spam eat before as your combo eating food um, because they put that adrenaline pot on cooldown, which was which was a really big a hurt to damage. Um, but the thing because, that they have because I'll just Cerebrus, say in combat, and we went over this many times before in micro lessons and such, adrenaline mm-hmm. equals damage, and that's why that's a red flag. Yeah, I mean, if you're spam eating fish and, you know, and other things, like, you're going to not be able to cast ultimates. You're not going to be able to cast those thresholds, which are, your damage goes down, you know, more than half if you're spam eating food. Um, which is an interesting way to do it compared to, like, you know, the old system where eating actually takes up time. Currently, it doesn't. You can eat for free. But eating does have a cooldown that is its own separate global cooldown. You can't eat more than one fish or meat or pie or whatever 
within, you know, X number of ticks of each other. The thing that's worth noting about that is that all, air quotes, liquid foods, foods that do not drain your journal and have their own individual global cooldowns for that. So while your cooldown for fish or food, whatever, is on, you could drink any number of these liquids. And you can't drink, like, two doses of Cerebrew back-to-back immediately. But you could drink a Cerebrew and a Guthix rest and eat food. You could do, you know, you could use these things in, right, in, in concert with each other to heal for really large numbers within one tick. Um, and the, like, the thing that's the standard for these right now is Cerebrews. Everybody uses them. The issue with Cerebrews is that they do drain your stats, um... And a lot of people, I think, aren't necessarily aware of that. Um, like, obviously, everybody knows that they drain your stats, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that, but like, the even with an overload running, the overload hides the stat drain. But if you look at your stats panel, you'll notice the numbers are still going down. Every 15 seconds, the overload reapplies the overload buff. But if you're drinking more than five brew doses in a 15 second period, if you're having to really spam eat food, like the last phase of Nomad or something else, um you will get brewed down below even 99. You'll get brewed into the 80s, into the 70s, as the longer you go spamming brews. Um, especially if you've got an inventory full of brews and you didn't bring any fish, or you didn't bring any jellies, or you didn't bring any Guthix rests to like combo eat with those, and you're just spamming brews, you'll get your stats brewed way down. Um, which, of course, is, is bad, because you only restore 21 points of stats every 15 seconds. And if you're taking four off every time you eat, that very quickly just brews you down to nothing. Um, and the old solution to this was to use a super store potion, but super stores don't restore you to all overload levels. They only restore you up to 99. Um, okay, so the solution right. to this is only you have to drink another dose of your overload if you want to cancel out this drain. <laughs> and that gets expensive fast. Right. And we're talking, you said it was 750 for the super Guthics restore, right? I think 650. Okay, 650. So, Compared to the thousand of a Sarah brew, you can right. drop that uh, stat uh, lowering effect on that and still do the combo with a uh, super Gothic's Restore right. and a Rock Tail, for example. So, yeah, well, there's that. And then, like, if you're only eating occasionally, right? Like, if you're doing God Wars 2 or something, you just need to eat, like, one food, one combo eat, whatever, every yeah. once in a while. You can use Sarah brews, and that's just fine, right? As long as you're not spamming the food. Um, if you are spamming, consider using Gothic Sp- Gothic Express instead. And even more than that, if you can get away with having a little bit, with having less burst healing, right? Like you'll see a lot of PVMers will only have one or two of those big, like sailfish looking fish in there or soups or whatever. Um, and they'll use the combo eat is actually a Gothic brew and, or a Gothic Express with a jellyfish, a blue bulb or jellyfish. Um, cause you can combo eat those two together. It heals you a lot, but it drains zero adrenaline. So you can keep all of your adrenaline up and still get those heals. Yeah. Um, it's worth noting those blue blubbers do heal, like, and Gothic Rose do heal still a significant amount per inventory slot. Right, and, and um, we should note, we should note that the Gothic Rest, we're talking 650, that's over the entire um, entire potion, whereas it's... No, it's, it's per one, dose. It's per dose. Per one t- I thought it was... A, the wiki says it's 250 life points at super uh, gothic stress we don't use regular gothic stress we don't play with those oh super gothic stress your cheapest sin because nobody uses the gothic scrapes and you get them when you get the grapes that are used to make super cerebrus which are very expensive okay. but gothic scrapes cost almost nothing so you always use super gothic stress never basic okay fair enough fair enough hmm. and if you look at the patch note patch note does specifically say super gothic stress now no longer use your adrenaline i don't know if regular gothic rests actually still give you adrenaline they might um, we'll look into that later. But the end, bottom line, when I looked at my bank, look at my Super Gothic Rex stack, they don't drain a journal anymore. Super great. So, big ups. Big ups for this patch note. I think that <clears throat> this is something that more people should be using, especially now that it doesn't put your adren pot on cooldown. These are great for your stat and adren management. It's your best damage. Best food you can use to support your damage. All right. And, you know, I I was always on the Cerebrews, but I, I think it makes sense at this point to start looking in, into these. Uh, just Brews are cheap the, as sin for, right now, too. Which... PGM usage. Yeah, that makes sense. I think he <laughs> So, you know. <laughs> um, um, uh, Tannis, any questions on that? No, I feel like I've just gotten taken through the RuneScape menu here. And, uh, 
<laughs> I think I will be having the uh, Gothic Super Brew and a uh, Blue Bobbler <laughs> Jellyfish. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is a fantastic choice. If we will have you at have it out for your right away. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, root crafting talismans have been updated to better reflect their usage. Mm. Fun fact, they used to all say a mysterious power emanates from this talisman. They now say allows access to X altar. Appreciated. I don't know if it was necessary. I don't know how many people were confused about this, but by golly, that's probably overdue. By we about needed that in two thousand four. So yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Good job. On to the dragon uh, special attack adjustments, and these are uh, Mod yeah. Sponge's Game Jam project from back in March. Um, and his uh, his quote on this is that he said, "This is my Game Jam project from back in March, so it'll be great to finally have these in game and see what the players make of it." And since special attacks were reintroduced to RuneScape, a lot of them have fallen into the category of useless, but being such iconic attacks, I wanted to give them the love they deserved. By reducing the clunkiness of weapons like the Dragon Claws and addressing their adrenaline efficiency so they match with more modern standards, hopefully we'll see more players picking them up or throwing them in their amulets. And with the time limitation of Game Jam, he was only able to work rework the dragon weapons after rewriting the tool tips. But if this is something players like, he'd be up for a second batch. I mean, starting He's, off on these. Oh, oh, hold on, taxi. Yeah, what's ready. Up? Here you go. Tally ho. Tally ho. Um, I mean. Just general opinion on these, I think they're fantastic. I think it is an interesting because it definitely shows some split opinions at Jagex that some people are perfectly okay with everything being dead content, but I think it's also something that Sponge saw as like, hey, this is the space that we could use to do cool things, and he made it do cool things, and I'm honestly really here for it. Like, I would have been fine too with just leaving stuff dead, but having these now in front of me, I'm like, oh, this is a really fantastic update. Um, <laughs> yeah, my general sense of this, just looking at this from a very high level, um, uh-huh. is this this solidifies Malie as the kind of uh, combat style that you can use for Slayer easily. You can both mm-hmm. use it for yes. Slayer very effectively, <laughs> and right you can also gain access to it very effectively through Slayer. And what I mean by that is that... You know, you're going to have your, your whips and whatnot, and then once you get to tier 92 Slayer, you can... Or whatever, 115 Slayer, I think it was, wherever the Abyssal Savages come from, you can get the Tier 92 Whip as well, and that comes from Slayer. You can make your own masterwork, so on and so forth. Um, You can get a spear from archaeology. So it's not locked behind PVM, and it's something that a skiller can grind for if they want it. So as such, I think from a very high level, looking at these special attacks, uh, it's just so nice to see there be so many options for this now. Which one do you want to start out with? Well, I want to make a couple of notes before we start. First, like just because you were saying it, I think it's super worth noting that um, Melee has the most tools of any of the styles in its toolkit, and kind of always has. It's always had the attack and strength ability books versus just the range or just the magic ability books. Um, Melee has a number of viable armors right now. Magic is really, you know, do I wear Crypt Bloom or not? Do I go defensive or full offense in my casting? And that's kind of your options. You know, do I have an armored battle stuff? Okay, I do this. These are the specs I use. It's fairly prescribed for you. Melee is very much situational for the usage. So these specs all have... Like I'm going to split them up into three groups. There's a set of them that are buffs, a set of them that are single target, and a set of them that are multi-target. Um, and it's also worth noting that I'm going to be like quoting the base special attack costs, but for anybody who's completed a lot of our recent quests, <clears throat> with a passive ring of vigor, all of these special attacks actually cost less adrenaline than is on their tooltip because of that ring of vigor passive. Um, so that's something else that's like worth just keeping in the back of your mind that these are actually, a lot of these special attacks might have a large adrenaline cost on the ticket, but when you actually look at it, it might be slightly less, depending on what other buffs you have active. Right. So, <clears throat> looking into the buff weapons. Now, I'm going to be real clear that a lot of these, all of these specs have some place where they can and should be used, and I love that. And that's one of the things I love the most about this update. They're not all end game meta PVM situational, right? And that's fine, I think. 
Yes, some of them are absolutely meant for the Iron Man who hasn't unlocked the this one upgrade, or the lower level account who needs some extra accuracy. Like that is what some of these are designed for, and I'm personally very okay with that. They're tier sixty weapons, or tier seventy weapons if you buy a wilderness hilt, which is important to note because for anybody who doesn't have an EOF, a lot of these special attacks are powerful enough to still be worth using potentially out of a level seventy weapon. Which is wild to say, but especially if you've got a tier 90 offhand on, you just switch your main hand out. Like, a lot of these will still hit kind of like a truck. Um, yeah, and that makes me wonder we'll what happens there. if you did this fully maxed out, but like you said, we'll get there. Not a couple of those like that. I've, spent a, I've done a lot of testing this week. I've spent okay. several hours that are dummy okay. kind of playing with a few of these. We're going to have, we're going to, anyways. So, diving into things. From the buff perspective, we have the hatchet, the battle axe, and the scimitar. Um, they each affect different aspects of kind of things, and you can technically use all three of them together if you really wanted to. Um, the hatchet is a 30% adrenaline cost. It adds a plus three affinity boost. Now let's talk about affinity for a second. Affinity, for the people that aren't like super familiar with the RuneScape combat system, is the equivalent of like, the monster's innate chance of being hit. So for anybody who's used to, like, Warhammer or other tabletop RPGs, you've got a chance to hit, and then you've got a roll to see if you deal damage, and then you've got a roll for your damage. The affinity value is, like, the chance to hit, their armor value is the chance to do damage, and then the actual damage roll happens afterwards. So you've got these three things. Affinity is a really important stat in RuneScape. The higher the affinity, the more likely you are to hit your target. So a 3 affinity buff from this hatchet is actually fairly large. The Stadius Warhammer is the comparison point. It's plus 5 affinity instead of 3, and it costs 5% more adrenaline. So it's definitely worth using the Stadius Warhammer if you have it. But for an Iron Man who doesn't want to kill revs for 5 years, the hatchet is a great option to just have that debuff. The hatchet effect also deals a little bit of damage and has a applies a debuff that is minus 10% the target's defense and magic levels, so that defense level will also increase your hit chance on a target. Um, if you're having trouble hitting something, just activating a hatchet spec on it, it's 30%. It might be worth doing for like higher level Slayer monsters if you have poor hit chance. Um, situationally, I like it. Do you, Are you going to be swinging hatchets at random monsters? Not super often, but I like that it's an option and it's there. And this is one that um, you wouldn't need to put into uh, to an EOF because it's that same affinity boost, whether it's uh, tier I will tier 60 say or 90, you, right? The problem with this, and I need to double check, I didn't actually look this one up this week, because the crystal hatchet has the same effect, so you could fire it out of a, t- in air quotes, a tier 70, but the problem is I think that these are classed as tier 1 weapons, so anybody can wield them. So I think this has tier 1 accuracy. Oh. <laughs> Which might mean that it has to go in an EOF. Okay. Um, that is the kind of, I didn't look at it, but that might be the case, and I'm not sure how that All right, so we'll calculation put it, we'll, we'll is done put for an, the hatchet in particular. We'll put an asterisk next to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, scimitar or Battle Axe next? Battle Axe. All right. Sorry. Water. Um, battle Axe. The Battle Axe costs 100% special, so it is it is big, but it gives you a, a one-minute buff that is a straight multiplicative 10% damage boost. It multiplies with almost everything. It multiplies with the Berserker Aura. It multiplies with uh, a number of like the the passive damage yeah. buffs, scrimshaws, those kind of things. It does this not multiply my, itself. This was my with... go, go-to before EOC. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's still good for things like mining. If you're on Legacy, it can give you a boost to your mining damage. It's like There's some other things that this can be used, because it also gives you a strength bonus that is dependent on your non-strength offensive levels. Um, if you have an overload on that Elder Overload, that bonus is exactly one. If you have any lower tier of overload on, that bonus is nothing. <laughs> so we're kind of going to pretend that doesn't exist, but okay. technically if you don't have any stat boosts on, it does give you a strength boost. Um, but we're going to consider that generally negligible. The important part of this is that for one minute you have 10% more damage and 10% less accuracy. That damage scales with everything except for the Berserk Ultimate and the Zara, Zara God Sword, where it is additive instead of multiplicative. Don't ask me why. I'll blame the code. Um, <clears throat> Battle X, because it costs 100% adrenaline, genuinely not worth using a lot of places in combat right now. Um, where it is worth using is standing at the adrenaline crystals at War's Retreat, where you can use yep. it, have a minute-long buff, and yep. then jump into the portal to go to your boss. Um, would continue to use it that way. They added a buff bar icon for it. That was the only change. It's still good that way. 
Moving on a little bit, so we've got the hatchet does the affinity, the battle axe does your damage roll, the, the third roll that we talked about is your accuracy roll, rolling against the target's armor, and that is controlled by the actual by the scimitar spec. The scimitar spec is a 25% adrenaline cost, so it's the cheapest of the three. It does 130% damage, which is not insignificant, right? That's going to hit relatively hard if you're fairly buffed up. Um, it's not worth spamming. Don't don't think that. But it is it is a not insignificant image. You're not wasting a global cooldown by using this special attack. Um, and the thing that it gives it is a plus 25 hit chance on all slash attacks. Oh, that's interesting. I'm not 100% sure if this is additive or multiplicative. I'm not seeing data for it on the wiki, and I didn't really go diving for it. I'm and, going and, to and that's kind of hard to it could be hard to test with higher levels like oh, that. Yes, uh, I mean you could you could go with a level one and try to hit something that you definitely don't have the attack level to hit with a level one weapon, <laughs> and just see. If you, and then you know if you're hitting one quarter of the time with this, then you're, I mean, well, no, because you need sixty attack to wield it. Anywho, um, it's worth noting that this is a buff to yourself, not a debuff on the enemy. So it's super valuable against targets that regen their their stats. You can't use a Stadius Warhammer or um, a defense-lowering weapon option on characters like Telos or Virago or a couple of the Slayer monsters because they regen very quickly and will effectively ignore anything. It's a waste of your your resources to do so. Oh, okay. But it, this is a buff that is applied to you and not to the enemy. So this hit chance buff will actually work on Telos and other targets. This might make melee Telos a little more doable. I mean, it's already doable, but it might make it a little easier. Um, and it will, like, so it's niche use for that, but it's also just a super nice, we've all been playing on Fresh Start, we know how bad accuracy is at low levels. Yeah. <laughs> it's rough. That 20% hit chance on slash attacks, that applies to a lot of the weapons that lower levels have access to, that applies to, like, whips, that applies to scythes, that applies to a ton of, of like, slash is probably the most common damage type, I'm going to say, for melee in terms of weapons that people use. Um, that applies to the tier 95 Blade of Lang, but if that, at that point, you probably don't need the hit chance. But hey, if you did, here it is. Looking at you, I guess, on the Telos. Um, so super nice. One minute buff to your accuracy. Um, that's the three dragon weapons. They are all, again, usable somewhere? Nothing that's like, oh my gosh, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen, but all, like, genuinely usable good buffs. Um, moving on. Looking at the single target option, there are four special attacks that were changed that are from dragon dragon weapons that are single target damaging special attacks. Uh, the ones I want to start off with are the dragon dagger and the dragon longsword. I'm grouping them together because a couple of reasons, but first off, they both come from the Lost City. They both cost 25% adrenaline to use, and they both do an average of 250% adrenaline or 250% weapon damage to your target. Um, which is very nice. It's uh, relatively standard. They come from the same source. You've got options. The differences between them are pretty stark, though. All right. The dragon dagger hits twice. The dragon longsword doubles the hit cap. In theory, looking at that, you say, well, they both do the same average damage. That should be the same. The difference here is that the longsword has a much wider variable range of damage. So the dragon dagger hits between 170 and 330. Average 250. The Dragon Long hits between 90 and 410. Average 250. So if you hit that 410, man, you are in the money. That is, that 410, if you are fully buffed with every buff available on melee, you can hit over 32,000 damage in one hit for 25% adrenaline. You you hit that lucky roll, you are in the money. You get the sexy big damage numbers. That, for the comparison... Onslaught and the Joss Book procs both cap at 30,000 damage. Like, this is potentially one of the highest hit caps in the game. It is disgusting how much damage this Dragon Longsword spec could deal. And is that an emphasis on could? Okay. (laughs) However, that same special attack, instead of hitting 32k, with all of those buffs, could hit an 8k. And you just spent 25k, 25% adrenaline on an 8k damage hit. It's not consistent. That's the problem with it, right. is that it's like, it's, the damage is less consistent than a Dragon Dagger. Which one the would you dagger, choose? The Dragon Dagger also has a plus 15% accuracy on both of its attacks. Um, the Long is just the, like, the big dick, I'm gonna hit something real hard and sometimes it's gonna look really good. It's that, it's that dopamine of that, and if that's what you're looking for, you go with the D-Long. 
If you're actually looking to optimize, though, you're going to over overcap less. You're going to have higher accuracy. Your damage will be generally better on a dragon dagger. And, and that's just so wonderful because, you know, we go back to uh, pre-EOC and these were the two best dragon mm-hmm. special attacks. I mean, they still hit. You can still use both, but that's that's when I would consider the two. The next thing to talk about is the dragon mace. So worth noting that the dagger and the longsword both cost 25%. The mace costs 20 The mace hits average 230% damage. It also unlikely to hit cap. Actually, no, I take that back because it's one hit. I did this earlier. Um, mace, plus 25% accuracy, so it, it should almost always hit. It hits in the range of 150 to 310, and it's worth noting this does not feature a doubled hit cap. So if you have every buff going, this special attack, like in a Berserk Ultimate, should hit cap a little over half the time. Which means you can just spam 12Ks on a target, or 16Ks, or whatever your personal hit cap is. Um, that's really attractive. But also kind of probably a waste of adrenaline because you're overhead capping. Um, but if you're outside of a Berserk Ultimate, this might be the best damage per adrenaline option in terms of being 20% adrenaline for the 230% damage. Um, <clears throat> so Mace might be the best spammable, assuming you don't have the buffs that are going to make you hit cap all the time with it. And, uh, otherwise, and, and what nothing are those too buffs? crazy with that. I mean, that's everything. Literally okay. everything. You've got okay. the new armor, you've got the... Um, specifically, you have to have your target smoke clouded by using the magic spell. You have to have uh, a grimoire active. You, like... In order to hit those, like, 16k numbers, that's... that's You need to have all of the all of the jimmies. All of yeah, them. And, and, and you're starting to see, you see, and... see why this setup is so huge in terms of money and switches right. and everything that's involved with that. Well, and if you're not using all of those buffs, this is probably your best spammable. Like, the mace honestly could be it, especially with that 25% accuracy buff. This is probably the best spammable, like, special attack for average low-level Joe, right? My first start world account probably ought to have a mace on her to use to, like, spammable, given I don't have any UF to put it in, so it would be lower damage than, you know, doing other things. But I can still have a higher level offhand on. It's, I mean, if you want to hit big numbers with it, It'll hit big numbers for you, so that's fun. Um, there's the option. The mace, I don't think it's going to see a lot of use because it doesn't hit the same numbers as the long, and it's probably less damage than the dragon dagger. But it could be used as a spam ball. The one that should be talked about, the one that's the biggest, everybody's like, okay, well, you know, this guy's wasting my time not talking about these are the claws. Um, <clears throat> personal opinion, I believe the claws are the best single target damage. All right. Um, <clears throat> For a few reasons. So the claws hit uh, 184 to 600% on the tooltip. The average is 392, and they cost 50% adrenaline, which is a whole lot of gobbledygook numbers. Um, and I'm going to make it more gobbledygook by saying that the claws have a very, very funny damage roll. So in theory, the damage hits go, you know, 4, 2, 1, 1 as a pattern. They'll always hit those same ratios. Um, if the first hit misses, the second hit would in, ca- in that case be a four, and then the third hit a two, and the fourth hit a one. And if the second first hit is super low, the second hit will actually re-roll itself rather than following the pattern. Like, there's a number of things that skew the damage on these higher than that 392% average. So anybody who's doing the math these like, oh, that's less damage per adrenaline, needs to kind of think about their use case for them, because in some places they'll actually do much better than that. Um, <clears throat> claws hit big number. Claws cost a lot of adrenaline, but claws hit big number. Um, and they're no longer kind of channeled the as well, that. which is important. They're also no longer a channel. They just kind of land now, which is really nice. Um, also worth noting that, you know, in the cost of that 50% adrenaline, the comparison would be using two dragon daggers or two dragon long specials. There you go. Yeah. Um, and so the comparison here is... Dragon Claws plus a strong basic or any other attack, you give flexibility in what goes in that other slot or two Dragon Dagger or two Dragon Long Specs. Um, it's worth noting that the Claws effectively cost 43% adrenaline in that case because you can use that basic to, or 40% adrenaline to gain adrenaline back. Again, uh, there's a lot of kind of funky math here. I'm, I'm going to tell you that if you math out the amount of adrenaline used over two global cooldowns for using the other specials versus using the Claws, and depending on your hit chance and a couple of other things, claws are almost certainly going to be the best at damage per time. 
The thing that's worth noting about these that I'm going to like caveat the whole thing with is it's kind of similar. And a Dragon Dagger costs you 30k to store, mm-hmm. while Dragon Claws are going to be expensive. Right? It's going to be a mail or whatever it is to put it into an amulet. So if you've got one amulet and you're trying to switch out specials and stuff, go with the Dragon Dagger. It's going to hit just fine numbers. It's powerful. You're going to be fine with that. Um, if you really, really want to optimize, I think the claws are almost always going to be better. It is a little bit of a, like, depending on your rotation and depending on your hit chance kind of a thing. But So then the mace would be... For all the, okay. for you, all the you, single you, target where, where stuff. Yeah. Um, claws, claws are most likely going to be your best option everywhere. Mace might be your best spammable if you're not hip ca- hit capping when you use it. And DDS is probably the best special to use in an ultimate as a spammable. The long is the best special to use if you just want to hit big numbers. That's where those four land. Okay. This leaves two left. The big ones. And I promised Tanis earlier that <laughs> we'd give him something that was going to be super fun. And so far, the biggest thing I'm offering him is a 32k damage hit, which is fun. But these two are the big numbers. The halberd and the two-hand. Um, these specs were not changed overly much. They removed the cooldown from the halberd. It was powerful before. And remember, we talked about these when we EOFs came up and we were talking about various melee special options. And the halberd was something where we're like, yeah, this hits like a truck. This is great. Um, they kept the damage on it pretty similar. So it costs 30% adrenaline. You do 240% damage. So, again, 5, 5% more adrenaline, 10% less damage, but it hits up to 9 targets. Centered in a 3x3 three three on the tile in front of you. It hits twice, so it won't hit cap. And it will just generally anything in front of you, or one square to your left or right, should just die when you use this, right? It should do ten to 12,000 damage on an average melee setup without a ton of buffs. Um, it should hit pretty pretty hard. I'm hearing slam. Um, yeah, you're I'm hearing, hearing Slayer. badass. You're hearing badass. You think that's badass. All right, quick reminder. That's 240% in a 3x3. Three three. The two-hand. It costs 20% more adrenaline. It costs 50% adrenaline. This is my favorite of the upgrades, updates for any of these. They do not say this on the tooltip, but the range of this is, ex- is doubled by having a double range weapon on. So if you have a halberd range weapon on when you use... So you have to have an essence of finality for this. You have to use... But if you use a scythe or an enhanced crystal halberd or anything with this, or a dragon rider lance, Masuda's war spear, any of those, um, Lani Akea spear, it hits in a 7x7. Everything within four tiles of you gets hit by the special attack. It costs 50% adrenaline. It does 290% ability damage. If you use this thing with an overload, tier 95 prayers... And uh, the Berserk, like, uh, ability active, I'm pretty sure it's guaranteed to hit cap. I don't think it can not hit cap. I think the lowest value that it can hit is still above the hit cap. This thing can hit an entire room for ten to 12,000 damage. Okay, it- so that's <laughs> going to be my new, uh, my new toy for 120 Slayer with the, uh, with the fresh start. Okay. I went and tried it out in the Fremenic Slayer cave. The things died. Everything just died. And that wasn't <laughs> and everything and within and four everything tiles died. of me immediately and died. And was that EOF'd or not? Uh, it was EOF'd. I was okay. using it with a scythe because, again, if it's not EOF'd, it only hits in a 5x5 five five because right. the dragon, long, dragon two hand actually does, only has the one square melee range. Um, so you do have to have an EOF to use this. On, I mean, you can use it, it still hits everything within two tiles of you. It's still large. But if you want to get the the full room clear out of it, you do need to... I would advise firing it out of a scythe. Um, and that's the comparison. That's I mean, just hilarious. That's it's, awesome. It's huge, and it does so much damage. It's so fun. Um, now, again, like, quick reminder that's in Berserk, so I'm kind of fudging the numbers a little bit because you have to use Berserk. So I did this out of, like... Uh, you have the, art, the thing already that decreases your ultimate cost by 10% because you've got your Ring of Vigor. I use 110% or General Relic, and then I used an Adrenaline Potion to use the special. So I, I did, like, Berserk, Adren Pot, and right. then Spec. 
okay. to get the spec off a couple times to, so, to actually do this. Uh, so but it, like, it, it requires some work, but it it's definitely within the realm of possibility <laughs> for, for Slayer. And even whatnot. based adrenaline potions, you don't have to have supers for this. I don't even know that you need any, because you've got 20 seconds of Berserk to work with. Uh, you just do have to like Berserk and then build adrenaline up. I wonder but how, also, this, how this would go with Legacy. And I mean, that's the other thing. You could use it in Legacy or outside of Berserk, and it'll still hit like seven, eight k on everything in the room. Like that two hundred ninety percent. If you've got your aura on and, and your prayers and your overload, like that two hundred ninety percent becomes like multiplied by two thousand, and then you know it, it, that becomes like a a good seven, eight k on average. Yeah, it's not and, too shabby. And and I mean, the problem with Mali and Legacy is that you lose the uh, AOE utility that that magic. Uh, has by default in legacy with the ancients and, and melee too, yeah 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 so um but I mean, this, but i mean this is this is hits, but, this yeah <laughs> like revolution malik slayer bars are easy enough to set up mm-hmm. with that you'll probably want to activate like you said berserk um well the other thing about special that. attacks is that they cannot be activated by yeah. uh, revolution yeah you have to you have to hit the big damage button but if that's the only button you're hitting. I mean, you just press the nuke button, and everything dies. That's still fun. I don't know. I had lots of big button for that. <laughs> I got a big button, and my button works. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't there some politician somewhere that were comparing the sizes of their uh-huh. red buttons or something? I forget who the, who those two were. Oh no, you don't. No, I don't. I I, I literally forget. Anyways, you can tell oh, me. Oh, that later. was a little. Yeah, I'll tell you later. Okay. I also should have mentioned at the start of this discussion um, the spammables for the other combat styles. The um, the Guthix or Zimmerex staff special attacks cost twenty five percent and do two hundred twenty percent damage. All of the melee single target attacks hit better than that. So melee is given different sets of buffs to go with the different styles. So these are not comparing apples to apples. But it is, in terms of being in line with things, it's the same, it's a very similar adrenaline cost per damage cost to both the drag- the Dark Bow and the Gothic Staff. Um, so, re- I think Splinter did a great job balancing these. Yeah, and, and this is the kind of utility we want to see, because, you know, what I see with this is this just, just adds more choice um, mm-hmm. within the melee combat style, and there's even... Uh, choice now between ranged magic and melee and you know right. thinking about it i like ranged but i don't know why anybody would use ranged for slayer yeah. at this point it's because i like shooting stuff with arrows or yeah. because things have terribly low affinity values for stuff that's not range mm-hmm. in some cases there's not a lot of monsters but there's a couple that yeah okay uh so so what would you say your favorite is out of all of them hmm it's gotta be the 2h yeah Okay. I mean, the long is a ton of fun. Uh, I think the DDS is the one I'm probably most likely to use most often. DDS or claws. Um, claws are always fun, but the claws have, like, looking into the math on the claws the last couple of days has, like, no, I don't want to anymore. It's messy, and trying to get an actual average value totally depends on the, like, ah. All As right. person who likes math, I don't like claws. Um, but the two hand is lovely. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Uh, Tannis, have we have, have have you been sold on any of these yet? Oh yeah, I, I'm th- I'm sold on putting a dragon halberd and a EOF and going and playing Slayer. Like, <laughs> yay! Why not the two hand? Do that. Oh, you you mean the big D? No, the dragon two hand. Yeah, the big D. Oh, yeah. You said halberd. Okay. I think you meant two hand. I got you. Yeah, that's what that's what I meant. Sorry. Yeah, cool, cool. yeah the big one. The big one is the two hand. Um, that's okay. the, that's the seven by seven. With bigger the cost, bigger circle. Yeah, that's that's what I meant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shiny. Oh, you shiny guys almost toys. make you guys almost make me want to do Slayer again. That's a feat, um, Tannis. We've done good work today. I, I said know, almost. Right? Hey, that's. Cl- I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> all right uh continuing on uh from the patch notes then um a new item is available from the traveling merchant and it hasn't been sold yet so we don't have exact numbers on how much it is or how many it's going to give but it's the horn of honor that can be redeemed for barbarian assault honor points i know people out there out here are just smiling for this because there's a number of things that you need barbarian assault for and quite honestly it's really hard these days to find barbarian assault teams, and even with that, I feel like it's one of the one of the mini games out there that really hasn't hasn't aged that well. 
It's Krosis without good rewards. Yeah. It's just high coordination requirement and somewhat high execution requirement and otherwise just a big old time sink. Yeah. I should start stacking these up for the trim requirement, I think. Or do we know yeah. what the trim requirement is? I don't know. I mean, we, we can Google that one. Is, we can yeah. Google that. That'll be a topic for me later. Um, Dark. Anyways, uh, lighting in the Dungeon of Disorder has been fixed. And the more interesting lighting one, the lighting in the Polypore Dungeon has been improved for better visibility. And, oh. you know, we, we say this, better visibility. But what this really is, is this is an accessibility change and, and fix. Mm-hmm. Because... It was just so so dark in there, and I know that was uh, it was always a pain spot for you, Tannis. Uh, we looked at it before the show, yeah. and, and you you know you said night and day difference, right? Oh yeah, it, it's it's much much better, and and I've spent <laughs> I spent a lot of time down there because, um, you know after the well, when invention first came out, not mm. first first, but when they fixed it to where right. it was you know working how it was supposed to, that's where I trained my uh, my stuff. I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, polypore staffs and, and ganodermic gear um so spent a lot of time down there and it looks you know I, I i couldn't see much further than whatever i was fighting in front of me and i never saw a difference in lighting on the floor at all um that was the first thing i noticed when you when you pulled when i pulled up your stream was i was like oh there's different shades on the mm-hmm. floor even that's kind of neat and you could see all the ganodermic beasts all around the room um yeah, which was which was quite different from what I was used to. Yeah, and you know this this falls in you know it it just looks like a graphical update to most people, but for you and many others, it's one of those accessibility fixes that we talked with uh, Mod Pebble a few weeks back about. So big moves. Um, the collection of notes from Zamorak, the Lord of Chaos pre-release event, are now obtainable once again from their allocated monsters in Black Knights, Dagenhai, Greater Demons, and Monks of Zamorak. And with this, uh, the collection of notes can be reclaimed from the POH, and the a cl- collection of Zamorakian notes achievement has been added, which is worth 10 rune score for collecting all five notes, which it doesn't say this here, but this is a master quest requirement this week. Yeah, and so I wasn't really playing a whole lot during the lead-up to the Zamorak, uh, the dungeon release, so I wasn't able to claim these then. First off, I will say they're really fun. Like, I really enjoy the lore. I think they're all really well written for anybody that hasn't actually gone and read them. From our for our lore hands out there, they're worth a good read. Um, and also, I really want to give props because I am a big fan of lore books being a one in twenty five drop, y'all. One in five hundred, one in a hundred for like the, some of the things. It's just not. I don't love it. Don't love it. This one in twenty five from like these were quick. We went and I was able to collect all of these in about half an hour. Just figuring out the best place to look for them, which hint it's the chaos tunnels, pretty much all of them. <laughs> and and that's um, how this should be in terms yeah, of in terms absolutely. of drops. You shouldn't, you know, go sixteen hundred dry or however many it is for the note on um right. Nerissa journal or whatever that is. So uh, for all of these like lore lore drops I think just should should just be generally accessible if you're if you're looking for them. Um and yeah, just like the um, just like the next fast. we were talking in pre-show for the bit as well. The next lore drops are re- really accessible as well now. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were one in sixteen. I think they've always been. Yeah, and AOD being a one in one. Good job. Right Thank on. you. Appreciate right it. On. And th- that's the way we like things to be. Um, right. And you know, we, you notice we're talking about drops here. There might be a monthly bit in the works at some point that could be on that. Bum, I mentioned. Bum, bum. I mentioned that the. Uh, that the January monthly bit topics will be uh, very hot and fresh on that, but more on that as we wind out the year. Um, fresh. Also added a timeline category in the quest list below World Guardian for quests that take place uh, post-Aftermath. All right. And added an age category in the quest list below Sixth Age for quests that take place post-Aftermath. And Worth th- noting... Both of those categories are called the Age of Chaos. Of course, okay. not the Seventh Age, and not like post Guardian or whatever. Age of Chaos. Yeah, and, and and that that's kind of what Mod Jack was saying is that the Sixth Age isn't necessarily an age in Rootscape. It was kind of more of a just marketing thing on that, and mm-hmm. you know, it it really raises some interesting more of questions about the uh, about the future. Of, uh, of what they want to do with Aegis Tannis. Were you on that one? We talked about that Mod Jack stream. I don't remember if that was yeah. the one you... Okay. Yeah. 
that, that was when I think we realized that RuneScape th- three marketing in 2013. Um, there's probably some regrets floating around about that now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, interesting things like looking at it is that I mean, Age of Chaos for one thing is just definitely a snappier title than Seventh Age. It just is. Good job. But also like thinking about this from a like. It seems like what they are trying to do, and what they did, what they did this year, and I don't know if this is going to continue, but I hope it does. That they've encapsulated within the year, they've done three or four large quests and a number of updates, all relating to a central theme. Right in this case, it was the Zamorakians, like with the Re- Zamorakian rebellion and Zamora and the gods being expelled, and then the civil war that followed. And that's the, the like the Age of Chaos was the like chapter title for this year of RuneScape. Um, all of the stories that it contained. And I'm wondering, because it sounds like they're planning, and maybe I'm I'm reading too much into it, it sounds like they're planning something similar for next year where they're going to have a more encapsulated storyline. They're not going to do the multi-year, you know, Sliske's War of the Gods. They're going to do something that's more of a, we're going to encapsulate and tell a story throughout the year, and then we'll build on it next year. We'll move on to something else, whatever it is. Um, I'm 100% I'm, behind that. Yeah, yeah, I am a too. fan of that as a model of like making something that you go from like even lower level to higher level requirements and building out a story over the course of a year like that. A big fan. Um and I hope that that continues that the Age of Chaos chapter is followed by, you know, an age of, you know, Age of Mortals or Age, of, you know, whatever it is that the next thing. I'm I'm excited to see what they have for us next year and I hope that they keep this kind of a cycle going. Yeah, and and you know the the fun part about all this is that if you look at um you look at Daughter of Chaos, the quest that started out the current storyline that we're getting ready to wrap up, that has requirements of only forty divination and and forty archaeology right. on it, and it's we're heading into the into the final quest where you can do that entire storyline with just those two skills. You don't even need high combat for it, and I don't think that's ever really been done um, in well, RuneScape about- ages before. Uh, there may have been a couple, I think there were a couple of quest lines that were pushed out one after another pretty quickly because they had, they had the content prepped, but I mean, like you, I think I was talking to you about this. I've talked to other people too, that like they enjoy like getting the levels and actually going through quests and quest lines in order. I think it's really great that they're releasing these, these quest lines and saying, and having increasing requirements and they're releasing them consecutively to say, hey, you can play through this story in order. We're going to give you all the pieces of it, and, and like they're going to be the one after another after another. We're not going to give you, you know, quests separated by a multi-year gap and you know jumping between quest lines. Um, it would be nice to jump back to some of the old quest lines for once in a while. But if this is the direction they're going, I'm not terribly opposed to it. Yeah, yeah, and we know we're yeah, getting pretty- the conclusion of that next week, but. I'm- cart before the horse go ahead tennis hey, well excited. i was just i was gonna say i like I, I i love this but i'm not opposed if we're like a palate cleanser here and there in between um we I mean, wrap up doing gnome quest you want to send me to uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> like let's we can wrap up some of these you know really long ones and uh, then and then we can just do this forever i'm cool with that but like heck yeah you know I'd also be down with with wrapping wrapping up just a finale here and there, you know, in between. A couple that are overdue, not a whole lot, just a couple of quest lines that are, you know, a few. some strings left hanging. Just a couple little guys out uh-huh, there, uh-huh, you uh-huh. know, might be vertically challenged, like to fly. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, <laughs> folks, uh, we're gonna uh, talk about what's happening uh, in December and uh, the make good offerings from the outage last week. But before we do that, I just want to thank our Patreon supporters uh for this episode um these folks here have all uh, subscribed uh to our to our vip plan for three dollars a month or more and you get a shout out on the first month of the show if you do that so this week in particular i'd like to thank alaska amos reed anatoly d andrew c arvitz l beekeeper steve big huge rat Bryflex, Christopher S, Chunk the Monk, Cycle RS, Diana, Drama Free, Duramax, Elo Matey, Flaza Man, Free Milk, G Hammy, Guy Lafleur, Jacob G, Jade Gizmo, Jason S, Jeebus, Jesse W, Jim M, Kesky, Ling01, Malinork, Mohan V, Nate the Great, Nick G, OTR Gamer, 
Pernasius, Ricky A, RS Nerdherd, Samuel FL, Skiotan, Scott DS, Shirtpants, Stubbeve, Tanner JW, the Naked Captain, the Davin Goat, Tim, Tom V, and Zant. Thank you, everybody. Ooh. It truly means the world to us. And if you want to learn more about this, you can check it out at patreon.com slash rsbnb there for starting as little as a dollar a month you gain access to the entire back catalog of our monthly bits and those are our bonus shows we just recorded uh the december monthly bit talking about holiday events and runescape so that'll be uh, up on the feed by the time you guys are listening to this episode it, was it really it was, was. it really was yeah. we we I think we cracked the code on what we want holiday events to be and, and what made them successful and whatnot. And, uh, some no of spoilers, our favorites. Yeah. No spoilers. No spoilers. Guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you get access to 53 of those for as little as a dollar a month. Uh, but if you want to go one step further, we have the, uh, VIP tier for $3 a month where you'll, uh, gain a special, uh, discord rank and discord chat channel access. And you get a mention at the start of the month, um, on the podcast here. In addition to everything else, hosting and production of RSBNB update is covered and all that. And for $5 a month, if you want to give the ultimate gift, um, you'll receive a shout out on the podcast each and every week and gain exclusive access to the outtakes we use to make the clip show at the end of the year, in addition to everything else. So big, huge thank you to everybody out there uh, for allowing us to do this. We'll be having our roundtable next weekend, December 10th at 9 p.m. game time, 4 p.m., Eastern. Uh, it'll be our uh, six month uh, flying round table in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, so definitely do join us in the RSBNB Discord for that one. Uh, there'll be talk about uh, where we're flying over, um, what's up in RuneScape, and, and what, we, what we've been up to as we uh, head into the final weeks of Fresh Start, just to, just to name a few things. So once again, patreon.com slash RSBNB. Thanks so much, everybody. It means the world to us. Thanks, everyone. All right. Yay. So RuneScape was out last week, and we didn't get to have your, your thoughts on this, Tannis, because you weren't here. Um, but Sirion and I did a good segment on this about, you know, the, the, the this was a this was very responsive from Jagex this time around compared to the login lockout. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they had up hourly updates almost posted on the website. Granted, we couldn't access the website until later, but they were all there when the website came back. They had them um, posted on on Twitter. They yeah, Discord and Discord, Discord I mean, and Twitter. Good, and good communication. Had all that, so they managed that very well. And they said um, part of this was going to be um, introducing and make good promise on this because of the outage. Uh, as a result of that, everybody who has logged in within the twenty eight days prior to November twenty first will be receiving a two day membership passcode that will be sent out through player inboxes and all players should receive their codes by tuesday december 6th and that covers the two days that were lost as a result of that and you know i i think that's a good thing to do i know those of us on fresh start were kind of hoping we'd get another two days of fresh start but it's kind of hard to work that into schedule yeah. with the way buffs and um and buffs and whatnot tick buffs. down so yeah um there will also be a daily challenge reward box that will contain six items and three for free to play generated from the daily challenges drop table from the week that everybody was impacted. And this one-off box will be gifted automatically between the first time you log in between December 5th and January 1st. Okay. That scratch the itch. Yeah. Well, I I think this was as good as we, we were going to get. Um, I'm glad we got something at all. Um, the bummer for me was like that was while we still had i mean we had the gi- the giant drop off right but we but it was still the better x p um for fresh start and so that that sucked um I feel like I'm two days behind now uh but it's it's something, so you know that's nice i and by you know the the membership i think that i think that's only fair um but the other stuff is kind of icing on the cake it's kind of like a sorry or bad you know yeah that's that's fair and they did actually go into a bit more 
um, about what happened with this. And they said one of the uh, things they've taken from this incident is that the investments made into security and safety of player data after the login lockout have actually made a real difference. Um, and with this, they want to do even more to look after player data uh, as a result of this. And with this, they are going to continue modernizing systems. And I mean, you wouldn't, let's we'll be honest with that. And they say as a result of the work that they did with login lockout and following it, no player data here was lost, even with the game being shut down for a significant amount of time and a series of issues that needed to be resolved once it was brought back online. And now get this, in total, six accounts were corrupted by the outage, all of which were identified and restored back to their normal state quickly. Oh, yeah, that's really nice. I was so afraid we were looking at another one of those. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, no. Well, yeah, oh, remember, no. well, remember with Login Lockout, they had to no. reconstruct all the account data through telemetry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they and, have a better system now. They got to, I mean, they've yeah. got, they have to realize, oh, shoot, we, we dodged a bullet. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they're also working with, um, the external partner, the data center in London, to make sure that there is um, a fallback plan so a failure like this cannot happen. Because keep in mind, this was one data center in the in London that took out all of RuneScape. And when you look at that, that's still a single point of failure uh, that does need to be mitigated as such. They're looking at further backup options that might enable a quicker migration of services some, should something like that um, happen. And they said... And they said, finally, we'd just like to say a big thank you once more to the patients you've showcased since last week. The calm, supportive, and eager-to-play attitude on display really does make a difference to team spirit as we've worked flat out to get you Mm. back playing at all costs. They did do that, that. too. And I will say, like, I thought they actually came back on quicker than what people... Like 10 or 11 hours before the estimated date. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, big time. They, yeah. they definitely some either it wasn't as big of an issue as they'd planned or the recovery effort was more concerted than they'd expected. And either way, it's appreciated. Yep. Because I remember I was just like, hey, what the hell? I'll see. And it, mm-hmm. and it, it logged in. I was like, oh, yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, the the fact and we, we we talk about all the time how, how how messaging and expectations is so important when it comes to updates, right? And how that's always hit or miss, it seems. But what we have here, I think, um, is an example of them doing the communications right on this. And mm-hmm. I was actually surprised that they read this. Um, a big thank you once more for the patience you've showcased since last week. And when you look at the RuneScape community in the past, I wouldn't have called the RuneScape community patient. No. Not well, typically. Not usually. Um, but maybe they just didn't look at certain websites. Maybe they, you know. <laughs> maybe well, they, were, they were too busy working to, to even see what was maybe, going on. Maybe, maybe. But I'm glad everything was able to be uh, brought back without... Uh, any damages on that and and hey you get these uh you get these codes so you could apply these codes to your fresh start or you, or you could give them away apparently if you wanted to as well on that oh, that's so, true but interesting all righty uh december 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 we mentioned the advent cal- calendar already but this coming monday december 5th we have the finale in of uh, the legacy of Zamorak storyline with the quest called Succession. And we're greeted by a big, nice artistic piece of Adrastea here on yeah. the RuneScape in December news post. Um, and the goal of this quest will be teaming up with Adrastea, helping her track down Bill Rock before he completes his ritual and becomes unstoppable. And there's that, once again, smaller runescape kind of threat that they wanted to highlight and they say it will be a cinematic thrill ride with a truly electrifying musical score Hmm. okay cool (laughs) i mean we've come to expect music from quest so that's good um requirements for this and this is goes in from what we were talking about with daughter of chaos so that only need 40 archaeology and divination this one only requires daughter of chaos completing the three civil war mini quests and 60 mining and 60 smithing 
which is, as we know, relatively easy to, to access. You Accessible. Can, you can we gain like. access to this entire storyline. Um, we already know what the rewards will be. That'll be a 50,000 combat XP lamp and a combat skill above 60, and cool. a 60,000 prismatic XP lamp and a skill above 60, any skill above 60. And then what everybody's been waiting for, the Infernal Puzzle Box um, Tier 6, which will add the ability to add the puzzle box uh, to your tool belt, freeing up inventory oh, space. God. And uh, Task 1 Zamrak Boss will be 65% um, reduced environment damage from Infernus, whereas Tier 5 is 60. And Daughter of Chaos, 14% damage reduction and 9% increased damage dealt to monsters well in the wilderness, up from 13 and 8%, respectively. Yeah. Now imagine, well, cool now going imagine going to there. now imagine going to slay abyssal creatures out there with your new uh, with your new uh, dragon two hand. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I wouldn't do that again, but yeah, um, <sighs> sounds it sounds fun. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd imagine you had a bad experience with that. Mm. Yeah, you sent me out Hydra's there. Remember? Dragon showed up. Oh right. Yeah, yeah, you're like, oh, just this. this. <laughs> that didn't work out Got well. It. Oh God! Where, where are you at, the Tannis? Death's office. Hold random, on. random Ripper demons there. Or, yeah, I could see that being a problem for you. That's fair, fair. enough. Fair enough. Um, one, Hard to deal with. one quest point and access to the dive ability, which requires oh thirty God. agility, and it'll be used when bladed dive is unavailable. They say this new dive ability is a generic movement ability accessible by all combat styles, and it can be thought of as lesser bladed dive. And of course, can be upgraded to bladed dive through shattered worlds. However, in situations where you can't bladed dive, such as not wielding melee weapons, the ability re- will revert back to dive, allowing you to continue dashing through dungeons at your own obnoxiously fast pace. They also say that um, you will keep the bladed dive upgrade if you already have bladed dive unlocked, but you will still need to unlock dive by completing the quest. Let me just say, I mean, first off. Effectively, the requirements of this are not 30 agility. They are 30 agility and the quest requirements, which is, you know, in the 60s. So it's not sort of like like magic. You get surge at 30 magic. You get this at 30, 30 agility. I would just like it if this was at 30 agility. I wish this was just an ability we had, but I am so grateful they're doing this for all of my accounts. I have It is, as a person used to using movement abilities to get around the game world quickly... This is such a lovely quality of life update. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm wondering, is it going to have the same range as Bladed Dive then? I think so. I think the only thing it lacks is going to be the damage. So Bladed okay. Dive uh, has damage and it resets if you kill a target that you Bladed Dive to yeah. within six seconds. I have a feeling neither of those pieces are going to be there. It's just going to be every 10 seconds you can, or 20 seconds if you don't have mobile, which is, I guess, more likely. Um you can click a square within eight tiles or ten tiles to view whatever it is and, and travel to that square. Um, I am a fan. This worries me because it, 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 it worries me because it makes me think we're going to have a movement centric quest. Okay, well, I don't think because I mean, we won't unlock the ability until after the quest. So I'm going to say probably not. Okay. Um, I don't I don't know that that follows. I think that they were just looking for a reward to give us, and that was a reward space that people wanted. Um, it does open the potential in for future quests, anything that requires this or, or recommends this quest to potentially have something. But, like, we already had, like, Daughter of Chaos. We were literally the spammable ability for Daughter of Chaos was a, was a dash. Right. Right? Right, right, you, right. You selected it. It was effectively Bladed Dive. Um, okay. So we've kind of already had that in a quest. And that combat, as you and Sirion mentioned on the show, you really liked. So, I didn't going in. He convinced me on that. I mean, it's certainly not an overly accessible combat yeah. style, but they made it accessible by dropping everything. You know, they adding a mode that made it very accessible, which is yeah, much appreciated. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah. Hmm. Well, we'll talk more about that next week on Quest Week. Uh, we also yes. got the Winter Trials Yak Track starting on December 5th, which is going to have um, all of the icy, wintry-themed yeah. uh, items. We don't have a full picture of them, but we see a giant ice cube, a new shoulder cape, 
That's uh, a frozen jelly. They froze a freaking jelly, and I'm very pleased about it. Yeah. The ice cape looks... The shoulder cape looks really good. I'm very excited. To Makes me wonder. Hopefully... Right. Hopefully that the tier 50 reward and not a bag reward. We're going to find out. Yeah, I think the yak sacks are gone, and they have been instead mm. replaced with yak coins. Um, oh, true. So these coins are re- are going to be given every five yak track levels and you'll be able to use them to purchase things like xp boost previous yak track cosmetics and alternate versions of some of the new cosmetics um Mm. and a yak coin will also be given with the uh completion of every repeatable track so once you hit 50 rather than getting the yak sack you're going to get new yak coins coming in so that's how you how you rack them up i like that i like that and you won't be able to save Yak Coins because they'll disappear one week after the Yak Track finishes. I don't like that. Because that's like you get 80% of the way to unlocking something you want, and then you just have to trade it in for lambs. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Um, All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how that feels and you know what the yep. prices are and everything. Because, you know... It's uh, all in the balance. This was posted on the wiki uh, two weeks ago, I think, and we'll just have to wait and see where it all lands. But this runs from December 5th to January 29th. Um, and you know these winter yak tracks are always fun. So, oh. um, but it's going to be interesting trying to complete this on the main and also working on fresh start stuff. So, I was say I, I wonder. So I did the last yak track I did on the main and fresh start. I wonder if I can do the same thing this time around. Well, I mean, you did it mm. once. We'll see. You might be able to do it again, right? So uh, maybe. And, uh, and you'll have to keep it. And mind. I'll get the goodies this time. Yes, you will. <laughs> Because we didn't get goodies last time because Uh-oh. of the competitive period. So Right. But uh, aside from that, we got Advent Calendar and Presents from the Sledge coming back on December 12th. Uh, this year in the Presents, we got the Naughty title, the Nice title, the Aurora title, and the Aurora die, which is going to be tradable and only comes from the Presents. It can come from any of the... Uh, four tiers of presents, white, blue, purple, or gold, guaranteed okay. in the golden puzzle, or the go- golden um, oh. present. Interesting, guaranteed in the golden one. Okay, so yeah. there's going to be a number of them. These look, from that from that image they have, yeah. absolutely gorgeous. It's somewhere between Third Age and, um, like, Celestial, and, the, like, it's... I think they just the they're question, really nice. Like in I the just question, think it looks really clean. Yeah, and and because of that, you know, you use it once and it's gone. It's going to be a question of what the hell would you use this on, given that it's so rare, right? Well, it depends on how many of them come into game. Yeah, if they're super, I mean, we don't necessarily want everybody to be running over with armor that no. looks like this. But if they are, I wouldn't be terribly mad. It looks good. Yeah, it does. It does. Um, extra uh, wrapping paper will be given through the uh, uh, treasure hunter. Uh, promo per key, of course. That, per key. And, you know, I, I I feel like this is an interesting discussion to have, and maybe we'll have this discussion on the 12th, but I just want to put this in everybody's mind. I don't think this counts as a microtransaction treasure hunter item because it's available through gameplay. It's both, right? I mean, it doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. It, it is available through micro, microtransactions. It is available through gameplay. It is more available if you do both. Right. And, I don't think just anybody's remember, doing just one. But, and I just I remember mean, how just rare played, those golden presents were last year on this. They were so. uncommon, but again, they like they had a chance to give, I think, 50 mil or a green hat or a scythe? I think it was just I 50, I think mil there were three. 50 mil or the green Santa hat. I thought there was a third thing but, in there. Okay. I mean, but it's... They were... There were enough of them coming into game. I feel like I saw a lot of people getting them who were not spending on microtransactions. Okay, okay, okay. Given that's just one die, so you are, are you just dying one piece or one weapon? Maybe I guess if you're looking for a weapon, you could just buy it. You could just die one weapon. Or I mean, if the dies are worth bills, heck, money. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> um, staff. And, for that. and I'll just say again, with the presents, you also get Christmas food, which, let's be honest, that gets dropped to the floor. Okay. There's some poor collector somewhere who's shelling out billions for it. Kudos to them. Power to you. And then comes the uh, the tradable rare for the year. Um, the green Santa outfit on mm-hmm. uh, Treasure Hunter in addition to the Christmas Chinchampa jumper, the Guthix Christmas jumper, and Penguin Christmas jumper. And 
the green Santa top, bottom, gloves, and boots. And I'm wondering with this, you know, they list them all separately. They got to be doing the set in separate items with this, right? Mm-hmm. But they're tradable, so remember you can buy all the pieces. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I had a I, I was going back and forth on this if I needed this and I realized, you know, I have the I have the red one. I'll probably go for the green one as well. Yeah. And yeah. I mean we'll, You need the green one for your hat. That's it. Then you can I be guess. the Grinch, Shane. <laughs> oh boy. I don't know I don't know if that counts as something that that people would call me Grinch like, but hey, maybe 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 they are. Maybe, maybe You're a I green am. one. <laughs> <It's a shame. laughs> uh, oh, in any case, let's just imagine what's going to be happening in, in two weeks when, um, or December 23rd, rather. Oh, so we won't have to talk about this on the show. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about it in the fallout from it in January. We, we will. There's a bond skyrocketing or whatever happens with it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, feel, and I, I feel like we can sum this up in two minutes here right now. People asked for holiday rares to come back. Mm-hmm. They came back. They came back, mm-hmm. and this is the medium to do it. Um, yep. And it's just like any other cosmetic loot box thing in any other game, right? Yeah. They also asked for, <sighs> we should have ways to attain it in-game and Treasure Hunter. Okay. Did that. Um, and And they said, it should be more about cosmetic than... You know, then like advantage. Okay, check. So I don't know what there is to bitch about. Yeah. Like I'm yeah. kind of at a loss when it comes to that. Yeah, you can still make some money off of it, I'm sure. Those guys look clean. But like even just the like this snowfall cosmetic that they're giving us looks really good. Like I'm gonna have that on my character. Like they gave us some other stuff that's more guaranteed that's just gameplay, you know? There will be good gameplay rewards from this, there will be options to buy things from it. Like, I don't know. I'm pleased on the whole. And I'm also excited for the Yak Track because I like the theme. I think it's, I'm going to probably do it. I haven't done a lot of the recent Yak Tracks. I'm probably doing this one. Yeah, that makes sense. And, you know, we'll, we'll go through, we'll go through the, the rare drops of the dies when that arrives. We'll also, um, as we said, go through the fallout of, of this green uh, suit outfit. But at this point, I don't feel like any of this is very, very shocking at all. So no, the other thing that did get released today, and I know we hadn't mentioned it on the show, but they did release a set of statistics from the competitive phase of Fresh Start. Oh, really? Where they did? It's actually it's in the announcement channel of the RuneScape Discord. All right, folks. This is this is, this is unproduced content going forward, so we're we're flying by the seat of our pants here. It's just a couple of stats. It's nothing too crazy. Uh, but things that they highlight, 102 billion total XP gained, 1.7 million levels gained, which lines up, I'm going to say, 57% of, yeah, go for it. 57% of players got at least 199, 12% 120, okay. Yeah, that surprises me. I mean, there are a lot of thieving 120s that we're about to see, but yeah. Oh, and here's, and, and here's, here's the good one. Mm-hmm. Here's the good one. Skill breakdowns. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, 200 mils. Of course, the combat ones are uh, right. all up there north of 100. Dungeoneering north of 100. I guess that's also combat related. Exactly 100. Everybody got their halos and got out. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's what happened there. The, the um, race took people to that far. 196 uh, for thieving, 200 mils. Um, and then it, it kind of percolates downward. After that... The um, 120s are the interesting one to me. Most 120s in defense, magic, and thieving. And I'm going to say that those are the three capes that I thought looked the, some of the cleanest. Yeah. I like yeah. the archaeology also looked really good in 140. Like, archaeology had a lot less, which maybe makes me want to do more archaeology. Well, yeah, yeah. Like archaeology didn't have an ED3 that you could do it in about three... I mean that's true. It yeah. takes a lot longer. Just people are a lot less willing to AFK. But I'm of, just saying. I, and I don't know how these people did it, but only twelve people got 120 farming in the in the competitive phase. 
they, I mean, they were being funneled at eggs and other things. I'm imagining. Yeah, I mean, right? that, like, like that's the only way I can see it happening. Yeah. Unless you and know, using they, growth they were, potions, they were doing up, the whole. They were up yeah. twelve hours a day, kind of thing. No two hundred mils. Though. There were no there were four skills that had no two hundred mils, and a lot of skills that only had one. Yeah, uh, no two hundred uh, mils in farming, rune crafting, agility, and fishing of all things. Yeah. Fishing is slow. That's what we're learning. Uh, fishing is hard. Uh, is a slow skill to train like that. You can't get fishing even with those boosts in that many weeks. So that's interesting. I mean, same with a lot of like wood cutting, fletching, with a lot of these that are gathering, one, gathering heavy. One two hundred mil herbal ore. Yeah, I mean, and prayer. Those both make sense to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, nine one twenty constructions. Yeah. Um. Only 142.99 agilities. That shows how the skill goes without Silverhawks. Good. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it should be. That's, that's sorry just, for your loss. That's just so interesting to me, and I'm I'm glad we have this. It feels like the competitive phase, you know, despite it being competitive in that sense. I feel like we learned a lot um, mm-hmm. from that. So I think we've learned a lot in general. Um, yeah. From from fresh start. I mean, I think we learned a lot about how an economy works when it doesn't have a glut of twenty years of just bullshit Stuff. in it. How I'm... how invention works when it's not like yeah. that. Like it. Yeah, we we learned a lot. There's a lot of interesting stuff here. I'm excited to see what Jagex has to say about fresh start, but mm-hmm. I think my hope, my impression is that it was a success. There's no way that they could say that it wasn't. I mean, they're just the numbers back it up in this. terms of the numbers. Yeah, I mean, the in numbers terms, think, like I it's still consistently. Back it up too. Yeah, it's still consistently fifteen to twenty percent of the RS3 player base. So, yeah. yep, I was gonna say I didn't even see the drop off that everyone expected. Yeah, like yeah. we're all yeah, still here. People are still playing it. That's, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's I mean, a better, I got, that's a better I, retention rate than old school leagues. Old school <laughs> leagues. B- but within a month of the league starting, they dropped about 80% of their players. We've kept at least half of the players even past the competitive period for this. Well, yeah, More I, got, than two I got 120s and 99s is, to get still. Mm-hmm. It is People you have do. clearly enjoyed playing an alternative game mode, and I, especially in RS3, and I hope, I think we've shown that to them, that there is a population looking for it. And by golly, I hope we get a, I hope it... it it incentivizes them to give us more content that is that is temporary and like this. You I know still what don't I... love the competitive part of it, but I think this is really I, I'm I'm I feel good about it. But good going into it. Everybody else was was not super. I mean, there was a lot of negative on it, but I I think we've shown that it was a good idea, and I'm very happy about that. You know what I hope it show it shows, and and I'm already feeling like I'm probably going to be in front of a firing squad for this, but oh no, <laughs> I think it. it shows that we need at least at least a 20% XP boost across all skills in RS3 in general. It is not fun. It's too slow. It sucks. In RS3? We, yeah. In the main game, we need a 20% boost across all... That's why this was popular. That's why it was fun. One of the reasons... I wouldn't have played it this way at the same XP. But rate if you if you hit to. your goals faster, do you uh-huh. then burn out on playing the game more? No. Right. If you that's if you exactly what Fresh Start showed. There's well, few are still working on their goals and stuff, right? Like if you had yeah. those XP rates, I don't. I, I mean, I don't know that I agree with this one, but power to you. Well, I'm just saying it's modest, and uh, I'm saying that twenty percent is big. <laughs> In the main so game, we were we were ago. doing a hundred. We we were we were playing with the we were playing with the hundred and fifty percent for most of this. Oh, for I know. Most of it. I know. So twenty percent on the on the main game. That's I, that is slightly better than here's this for than a challenge. The avatar, a clan here's avatar. this for my challenge. Um, I mean, twenty percent is. I mean, yes. Uh, no, which one more? Anyways, doesn't matter. Um, I, I'm going to posit that a lot of the people, there's, I'm, I think there's probably, I'm, my hope is that a lot of the people who are playing for start are one actually lapsed players, and that is just their RuneScape account that they are playing on now. That's one of my hopes, and the other is my expectation that anybody who was like, like, I'm gonna say me, <laughs> like if I had not 
slowed down my RuneScape playing over the course of this year, if I was still like fully caught up on comp and trim and approaching absolutely maxed rune score and finished hunting all of the all of the skilling pets and now hunting probably boss pets if I'd continued to play really, really actively on my main, if I hadn't made my alt last year, I would be looking for something else to do. I wouldn't I would still be on fresh start because my main would be um, that's it. I like I think that a lot of people that are in fresh start are probably fully finished with the game and looking for something to do. I don't know that they're necessarily there because the XP rates are giving them more dopamine. Maybe. Well, it's it's but, but it's funner. Like it gives you something else to do. It's not the same thing. It's not so slow. I don't true. think we're in an era of 20 years ago with these slow ass XP rates. I, I just, mean, looking at I you, the well, fishing. Hang on. Yeah. But. So, so on that, I mean, we can say then that you know things like cooking, wood cutting, fletching, uh, crafting, and herb lore you, that might be worthwhile a discussion on it. But then those skills are very well set in their ways of how they're trained. So, and th- the one issue that does come up with this is that. You can boost the XP rates, right? And you can make getting 99s and 120s sure. the, 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 the goal of the That's game. Right. Normally, you can have, if you have bonus XP, you can have these ex- better than the current XP rates. Right. I mean, but, you have uh, but, but the thing is, is then that. after that, where do you That's go? True. Where do you go? There's no, yeah. like, there's no, Questing. there's no end game aside from PVM. Yeah. And, and that's the question. I mean, Master Max now, but. I guess. I guess. Um, there's yeah, I'm also... just talking about making it funner while you're while you're getting there. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll, t- we'll talk about that and what we've been doing because I actually um, am finding one skill less fun in Fresh Start, believe it or not, than Mainscape. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, well, okay. Go on. let's dive into it then. Yeah, yeah. I just want to. Um, we'll we'll do what have we been doing uh, before the achievements as, as a result of that. But I just want to say uh, they also said that there were 2,859 deaths to Zamorak of all bosses. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, the 3,511 halos of returning have already been, um, awarded, uh, 2,346 players talked to Max during the Gower quest and 14 players have unlocked the chromatic party hat. I will yeah. say it's interesting. The number of halos of returning that have been claimed. Yep. That's quite a few. I am su- I'm surprised at how low that number okay. is actually. The comparison is the number of golden halos. We know that about 3,000 golden, ha- golden halos have gone out a little under, so it's not that many more Halos of Returning than Golden Halo. I was expecting the Halo of Returning to be much more accessible and much more common. Well, we than have that another. We have another five and a bit weeks to get that. Um, well, but then you true. have to do. You have to do a bunch for that Halo of Returning. You got to do Rune Score and stuff too, don't you? Quests. You could do it and, just and through quests. quests. I yeah. have. I think I have seven shards, and I haven't played my first start in almost a month. I'm sorry to say. Um, like I got. I. I because it's only 50 quest points per shard, you get 200, 300 shard, you know, quest, 200, 250 quest points. You get four or five shards from that. You're almost guaranteed to have two to three shards by that point from total level. Yeah. And then you get some rune score because you've gotten enough total levels and you get rune score total levels and you get one shard through that and that's it. You know? Um, yeah. And really you've done any kind of from, Cause I don't think I've gotten any shards. I mean, 50, 50 quest points, 500 total level, 2,000 rune score. Every multiple of those you gain gets you a shard. And they don't show up in your inventory or anything. They show up in your uh, interface. Yeah, so if you're 1,500 total level... Uh, yeah, there's an it. event interface that's in the ooh, oh, social Oh, yeah, I'm time, like 1,978 total yeah, level. Yeah, so you, you at least got You've three, got at least four. three. Yeah, yeah. and you, I know you have some quests done. I don't know if you've got 50 quest points worth, but... No, I'm okay, about 32. <laughs> you probably have one... For, like, you're probably sitting, I'm guessing, at four at four uh, shards, then. You probably have 2,000 rune score from various things. All right. Well, what have we been doing, then? And, and I'll start this off since I kind of teased everybody on that. <sighs> um, you know, as, as I mentioned, uh, last week uh, was uh, the end of the competitive period, and I, I took it kind of easy that week. As a result of that, got the Halo this week for top 100 farming, so that was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I've been doing this week is I've been continuing on with the player on farm and the ranch, of course. But in addition to that, I've been working on woodcutting and archaeology. Uh, woodcutting mm-hmm. with Acadias in Metaphos, unlock that. 
and archaeology just pushing through uh, the skill. And that's actually the skill that I'm finding less fun on Fresh Start, believe it or not. Really? Archaeology? Oh, I, yeah. I know where oh, you're going. Oh, borders, borders in the auto screener. No, no it's, it's go, not that. Go ahead and get there, Shane. Um, I know where this is going. I'm not going to steal your thunder. You're missing out on so much of the skill in terms of how it's leveled up. And what I mean by this is that, you know, you do a handful of artifacts from each collection. You don't complete the other side of the collection. And then you're ready to move on to the next dig site. I've even skipped over uh, some excavation sites completely entirely. and and it gets worse from that in that with boosted xp rates and boosted xp in general in archaeology you're shooting yourself in the foot because you're going to be higher leveled and you're not going to have the um appropriate ranking in the archaeology guild to unlock things like the precision upgrades the serial box like upgrades and whatnot and the material did i say serial i meant material box <laughs> yeah. I mean, so the deal is that the skill was definitely designed with you get a certain number of chronotes and a certain number of things per level. And with restoring artifact XP being increased, you uh, you do not get those. Yeah. You do not get all that anymore. And the, like, you said you're almost like level 70 something, 80 yeah, or something like that? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm 65 presently. I will probably oh, okay, okay. break through that 70 by the time. <laughs> Uh, I was, I think, around down. people were he's saying that around in the seventies and end into the eighties, they were still completing one of each collection. Okay, like the do just completing each collection and going in order by level. Like you, you're behind for a long time. Like I'm, I was still doing when I was doing this. I was doing level twelve excavations at level thirty eight. Yeah, I hadn't done any of the excavations between. Mm -hmm. However. When you hit into the 80s and that slows down, you do catch up a little bit. The big thing is actually the chrono deficit. Yeah. Um, so you won't have access to the Master Archaeology outfit. I mean, you you can. It just takes the same amount of time. Yeah, and, and I mean, as there's, if you didn't like, have like there's, XP rates. like there's ways of fixing that and whatnot. And I do think I want the 120 on that. So I think my it you know so glut of my glut of treasure hunter keys might go on archaeology um please forgive yep. me anyone out there who is a huge archaeology fan i i am too but hey i mean but, you gotta do what you gotta do yeah to get you gotta you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do and you know um you'll still get all of the lore something you'll still something get eight weeks of afking it or something you know, something many. extreme methods and whatnot are required in extreme times oh, right yeah. but um yeah, yeah and so i i mean Archaeology is still a wonderful skill. Um, it's so immersive with all the environments, Everlight, Centiston. Um, I gotta say, leveling up now, the skill just flows so much better from Everlight to Centiston. There's not that huge gap there that we had previously, so that's very nice to see. Um, so it's, it's just kind of more of an annoyance uh, than anything. But uh, that's that's what my fresh start has been doing was just uh, focusing on archaeology and, and woodcutting. At this point, and the reason I chose wood cutting was was because of the green cape, believe it or not. And, and Tannis, you actually beat me uh, to ninety nine wood cutting on fresh start, so I think we'll uh, we'll go to you next on that. What you Thanks. Yeah. To? Um. I uh. Yeah. I did the ninety nine wood cutting, and then I did one uh, ninety nine crafting. So that brings me to uh, mining, smithing, woodcutting, crafting so far, um, and I'm in pursuit of fishing and divination next, um, trying to get those before it wraps up. Um, I love archaeology too. Unfortunately, I can say that I'm level 70 and I've never put a trowel in the dirt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because I, I ended up with some dummies from, from my treasure hunter, which I was going for. Anytime I got the choice, I would pick Dungeoneering dummies um, right. because I don't want to do that. Um, sure. But sometimes you couldn't pick. You just ended up with the, you know, you just ended up with them. So, mm -hmm. um you know, what am I not going to use them? I mean, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, I, I, I use those. Um, we're back up. We're up to 1978 total level. Some highlights with that would be um, 77 agility, um, 77 slayer. Uh, so, you know, and 84 dunge. Um, but the, the one that I'm, getting closer to now is 91 div um so looking forward to trying to finish div out and i think if i do that i will have if i can do div and fishing then i think that's pretty much that's all your gathering, gathering skills. skills yeah 
Yeah, so that'd be well, cool, well, right? Well, I not mean... farming, because farming counts as a gathering skill. Oh, it does? Yeah, officially. Oh, by yeah. <laughs> and archaeology <sighs> does as well, doesn't it? Uh, a little. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it kind of straddles it. I think it's know? classified for the for the cape. Oh, yeah, it's true, for the cape. For the oh, cape. okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. The, the official one. But, you know... It is what you make it to be. Do what you want to do. What's going to make you happy, and I'll do the rest. That's fine. <laughs> Power to yeah. you. I mean, yeah, straight up, we're you doing. know, that's what it should be. And I am. Uh, I'm also sixty-seven invention. Um, invention yeah. is extremely difficult in fresh start worlds. Um, yeah. You know, give it. Try try invention Iron Man style. I got a lot of respect for the Iron Man out there because boy, things to do. Yeah, Ooh. and there are not things to disassemble, and then you got to figure out what to disassemble. Like the white right now, armory is my going to be my go-to. I know. <laughs> I spent a lot of time at that place on on main. Uh, yeah, and I and I thought that would be. I thought I would do that again, but I I didn't because I couldn't because it required quest. Um, quests. Yeah. <laughs> and and on top of that, like I still like I need um like I need I don't know, there's the components I needed don't it wouldn't have done me any good. So Got it. Um now I do spend a lot of time going between Slayer Masters and buying insulated boots. Um mm-hmm. do a lot of that. <laughs> if I if I'm bank standing, I I'll do it by a Slayer Master so I can buy my boots in between. Um Yeah. Right now, I'm I'm looking for swift parts uh, because mm, I need darts. Them. Could you smith yourself some darts? Yeah, and I do. I yeah. Should be and, quick. Yeah, and I, I well, I'm wondering darts or javelins. You know, it would be even better. Oh, I don't know it? if javelins give them. That's a good question. They're thrown, and it swift parts come from thrown weapons, so mm. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, invention has a whole lot of new new uh you know kinks in it but we didn't get i never got to do invention all the way through which is cool because you know i'm using a rotomatic and <laughs> i'm 80 fishing right like i'm i was using hammer trons like yeah so very I mean, true very true you know it, right i'm really getting to do it like i always thought it could be done it's just hard to get those components not starting by training, you know, yeah, with 99 fishing already. Yeah, there, and, and, you know, looking at, at waterfall. and I'll just say this, looking at divination and invention and fresh start, those skills just make me scratch my head even more about why they're, yeah. why they're in game, you know? Um, <laughs> that and agility. Fishing and provides hunter. food. I know, I, I'm saying divination and, and invention. Oh, yeah. I mean. Because we had a quest where we killed a god, Shay. It was, it was time to, <laughs> it was time for a new skill, and they did a gathering skill, and then a while later they did a skill that they reworked three days after release. Sorry, guys, it was really, I mean, you tried. I like the way it's ended up. It's ended up in a fun and interesting place. Like, it's definitely the mm-hmm. support skill, right? Like, it's it's yeah, one of the, the true most supporty support, support skill. skills. Yeah. So. It's more supporty than I agility. I want that. It's more supported than agility. It's more supported than thieving or slayer or dungeoneering. Okay, so True. it's got that spot. Yeah, I think so. Any- I personally think so. Anything else from you, Tannis? Mm, uh, n- no. Oh, other than here's a little here's a little tippy tip that uh, I wish I had remembered earlier. But if you are making urns and you bring your runes with you if you're not planning on selling them you're just using them for you they can stack yeah so i made lots of trips to the clan (laughs) uh, bank that i did not need to do and then it dawned on me i'm like oh idiot Make me your oh, runes. No. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Hindsight uh, hindsight yeah. we messed up. And oh. on that note I did I did all of uh ninety nine farming without urns because I didn't have the crafting level for them. Oops. Now the exception to this is rune crafting where you have to use pure essence on them so it's not stackable. Right. I'm yeah. not angry. You're angry. No, it's fine. Yeah, and <laughs> you can't use I don't think you can use them in rune span anyway, so You can. Oh you can? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, maybe yeah. I'll 
That might be worth getting out the old bank box. That's that's the other option. That's, you could do oh my it. god, you just bank all the earns you make for an hour exactly. That's true. Mm-hmm. I've been banking my, my logs with the bank box, but anyways. If you did invention yes. chain, you can have borders, you know. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh how about you, Thaxi? What have you been up to this week? Or Ooh, so I've mentioned that I've I've been unfortunately bad about uh, getting on Fresh Start and doing it because I want to. I want to get all these things done. And I've just been la-di-da through the holidays and not doing other things. Um, me prioritizing it. Love Pokemon Scarlet. That's been a ton of fun. Um, but what I have done this week on RangeCape is I've gotten back into my main. I had not done anything with... Um, I mean... For a while, to be honest, um, with my main in a while, especially since Fresh started to come out, uh, I got back on. I did. I got through. I saw every wilderness event, flash event. I think I'm currently sitting between thirty and forty of them completed. Um, so I'm working towards that trim requirement. I am absolutely going to lose my comp and trim again, anyways. In, when the um, the grace period is up for the garden, but I started. I've got all plant power tier four unlocked and I'm working towards getting faster herb growth. Um, so we're, we're rolling, we're rolling on getting those requirements done. And then I'm, I'm debating what I want to do for my first getting back into the 120 grinds. Cause I definitely oh I want that master comp <laughs> trim nonsense. I want it. My brain wants it. I am fully willing to AFK hard enough as is required by a number of these skills. I am here for it. Like 120 woodcutting, we're we're coming for you, eventually. Don't do that uh, one first. Miss- that one is a pain. I know, but then it's out of the way. I'm missing two pets still, and they are there are two, well, technically three, but we're gonna call them two: um, fire making and rune crafting. And both of those are going to be wildly AFK adventures. I'm going to do the rune spin. You can't make me. Um, and I have the bonus experience to 120 already banked for those because they're the last two. So I knew I was gonna be training them, and I might as well. Um, so I've been building bonus experience in those for a year and a half since they were my last pets left. I haven't gotten a pet in a long time, actually thinking about it. Um, but I w- I was, I'm debating if I want to do one of those or if I want to tr- switch it up because I've been doing a lot of both of those in my recent RuneScape history. It's part of the burnout, so to speak. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what the wind is. But I've, I've been having a grand old time getting myself back into Herblore and... Um, I will say I'm not going to be mad and I'm not going to continue onwards after I have the Rex done for those. I I don't personally enjoy that timed and time-gated content like that. Uh, like, I hate dailies, just as a kind of with a fiery passion. Um, not like the daily talent system, but just like things that run on, you can only do once a yeah. day. I, 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 personally, not my type of content. Well, yeah, and, and, and you know, grind. completely for me, I have not completed the, the garden unlocks either yet myself and you know i am the farmer and, 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 and i should be doing more herb runs but i just i just i just don't remember to you know at, at this yep. point maybe if there was i've a been trying to get in three a day something yeah that's a good to number. use up the teleports on the mortania farm teleports on my hat um because you know free teleports to there i don't have to worry about an ecto fundus and it's the silliest thing that is an optimization but it's making me log in to get three of them done a day so that's it that's what I've been up to, honestly. A ton of that. And then, like, reorganizing a bunch of, like, my interface a little bit and doing some changes. Did a Reaper test. Did a couple of raids. Nice. You know, like, the odds, odds and ends. Cleaning out the bank was really overdue. But <laughs> bank. It always. Forever. I, I won't, forever I won't. the bank. I, I might or might not have made progress since the bank roast on, on my bank. I'm proud of you. This is growth. We'll we'll check check it up in February, <laughs> six months after the fact. Ooh. Follow up? Anyways. I'm down. Achievements of the week. Starting off with Fresh Start, we have RL Batora with 99 Farming on the 30th. Battle Slash F with 99 Thieving on the 29th. Mr. Crafty FSW with 120 Archaeology on the 28th. Tannis, you got your 99 Crafting on the 28th. Congratulations. Congrats all. We had TTV... Hi, HIA Cliff, uh, 99 Herbler on the 27th, along with Jingles, Fresh Start, uh, 99 Agility on the 27th. And then going back to the 24th, we had Crafty, Mr. Crafty FSW's uh, 99 Divination. We have Tannis again with his 99 Woodcutting and Battle Slash with 99 Herblore. Good job to everybody. 
getting those up there, right. getting those capes unlocked. That's right, all right. All right, so we have some regular achievements. So we'll start those off on November 28th. Um, so we have uh, Free Kesky. There we go. Uh, with 99 Archaeology. All right. Battle Slash with 99 Summoning. Um, Jack Blog with 120 Herb Lore. And this is on the 27th. And Jack Blog with 120 Dungeoneering on Ooh. the 24th. Nicely Big done. Grunts. Nicely done. Especially good job, Battle Slash. 99's in both game modes. Yeah. That's actually kind of cool. And Jack Blog with two 120's. Good job, guys. That's awesome. That's a good inspiration, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's multitasking like we all should be doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Um Tannis, pick of the week. Um, so this week I um I was a little bit behind, like a week or two, but I finished up a new show, a new Star Wars show for all the Star Wars people out there um, called Andor. Um, you've probably heard some of the hype and the hoopla, and some people love it, and some people hate it. And Well, that's pretty much Star Wars nowadays, right? Any major uh, franchise, really. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But what I like about this and, and what I find so interesting is, you know, we're used to these the epic story of star wars with the jedi yeah. and the, the sith yeah. and you know the the heroes and there's it's very um fanciful and you you know it's 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 like that modern epic you know um odyssey but what you forget is if you really think about what's going on um there's a rebellion right and what do we know about rebellions? Well, we know they that... get crushed. <laughs> Damn, well, okay, it, it, geez, Shane. Oh, okay, calm down now. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. well, <laughs> in real in real life, they they need time to grow, right? They have to get the they you you're you're developing networks and you're um, and it takes political will political leaders. It takes subterfuge. It takes all this palace intrigue. Um, None of it can happen with just one part. And what mm -hmm. Indoor does is it kind of shows you all those other pieces. Um, it kind of takes the heroes and the big players out of it, and it shows you what was going on um, in the Empire you know, during that time and how the rebellion started and how like certain actions that the Empire did to crush people shane um work <laughs> against them <laughs> and cause them to rebel even harder well you just um, crush them even harder then <laughs> oh boy yeah so um so it's just a it's just a different look at at star wars which i i think is kind of cool and so that's why it's the pick of the week all right and i assume that's on disney plus as per usual yep mm. all right sounds good and you know I, I I do gotta ad, ad, admit and uh, congratulate the franchise for for branching out like that. I'm kind of glad that they're testing the waters first, and that you know we're not getting like a, like a Star Trek uh, version of that at this point without knowing if something like that uh, could could hold water, uh, so to speak. So uh, that's interesting. You know, there's a branch out like that, and, and you know that that's one thing that I've always found uh, with the uh, Star Wars movies, at least, is that they're they're very simple and whatnot. Uh, in terms of uh, the messaging and the likes, and this seems like this is a, a deeper dive into into the into the universe that it is. So, so that's interesting. Very much so. I mean, that's a good way of putting it, Shane, because um, it's always very Star Wars has always been very good versus evil, yep. black and white yep. kind of thing. And this, you really see how even what you perceive as the good yep. guys are making these incredibly difficult choices that you're going. That's not what a good guy would do. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. But you yeah. know, they're but they're trying to survive and they're trying to rebel. You know, you against, might have just made that sound a little bit interesting to me. Really? Okay. Mission <laughs> accomplished. But yeah. um in any case, I, I I I'm glad you brought that forward as as pick of the week. And you were wondering if you did done that before. The answer the answer of course um was no but i think that brings us to the end of the end of the update here this week folks so 
Uh, I'll just say if you want to subscribe to the podcast to get it delivered automatically to you, that's the best way to get it when it uh, goes live on Friday for the audio version and Saturday for the um, video version. You can find it at update.show slash subscribe or on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Pocket Cast, Amazon, Stitcher, and more. Uh, once again, update.show slash subscribe. We're also on YouTube at youtube.com slash rsbnb. That's where we post the nibbles, uh, what we're uh, working on in terms of uh, smaller segments, clips from the podcast, and the like. Uh, definitely go there, like, and subscribe. It greatly helps the channel out. But uh, unless you guys have anything else, I think we can call this one done. I think that's a wrap. Okie dokie. Well, with that being said, we'll see you guys next week for another episode of RSBNB Update. It'll be Quest Week, the last Quest Week of 2022. See you then, everyone. Take care. See ya. Ciao. Oh.